welcome to Live Your Own Way with me, Lucy Gleason Interiors, chatting homes, life and inspiration with my very special guests. chat today with fine artist Jessica Olborn, who is well known for her fine line drawings on paper and she also uses glass, clay wax and honey. She creates multi-layered pieces often using insects or pressed flowers. Jessica has exhibited in many corners of the world and also has created two books named Beheaded and The Boy in the Oak and has worked on some amazing commissions including Mandarin Oriental Hotel and various Soho House projects over the years. Her devotion to bees has led to Jessica developing a meadow in Devon with her family, which also supports all kinds of other wildlife too. Hello, Jess. How are you? How's it going in London? Hey, Lizzie. Yeah, it's all it's a little bit grey, you know, but it's all fine. Thank you very much for inviting me on. Oh, that's a pleasure. Are you getting much time in your studio at the moment? Um, it's been, I mean, it's sort of been okay because I do have, um, you know, I've got all the family at home all the time. And so, you know, it's... It's a little bit like sort of drowning in domesticity here, but it's it's okay. So I kind of, I've got my studio at the end of the garden, so I get out there as much as I can. And then uh, I also work inside as well, because I've got a nice big roof light. So, you know, just kind of working around, around the situation and getting as much done as I can. I imagine your studio and your home as well being full of beautiful butterflies and spiders is that the case it it kind of is (laughs) although I keep I keep most of my sort of you know more disturbing uh, specimens in my studio and um I've also got like I've got an owl in there and and uh, um but I I I have all kinds of things that I draw from loads of bones and stuff like that and then and then I've got all my beautiful butterflies and my bees so it's a, quite a mix. <laughs> when did your interest in nature and insects develop, do you think? Um, well, I was always, as a child, I, I was, um, I loved animals and I had, I had quite a few and I was, I was, I sort of grew up, I mean, I was born in London and then we moved to the countryside when I was about six or seven. And I had, that was kind of a, quite a big sort of leap for me. And I, I just really enjoyed being outside and discovering nature and um and then I guess uh when I don't know it was, I think I think it was when I was at uh, during my degree I I started to uh, collect actually I started collecting sort of um uh, crab shells and things like that and I started doing etchings and I just became more and more obsessed with getting into the detail of um living you know dead and living forms and also then at that point also I started getting really um sort of excited by geometry and pattern uh and I, so I think yeah and then I sort of really been kind of still working through all of that you know uh, I'm still working through all of that now yeah did you do fine art as a degree yes I did yeah with insects I mean some people are terrified of them aren't they especially spiders do they not phase you at all no I mean I I really I really love them I mean with spiders though I have a particular sort of relationship and I did do loads of work on spiders for quite a long time and then I've I've videoed them and uh you know I've done films I did a film using a very sort of it was it was this I was so excited though because I was in the meadow and I caught this um thing happening between a spider and a, and a cricket and um I saw the whole kind of rather kind of you know ghastly kind of end to this poor cricket's life but but I but I just get really kind of fascinated but I wouldn't you know with spiders I don't you know I can get really really close to them and little ones I don't mind crawling over me but I couldn't I couldn't sort of I couldn't necessarily hold one for any length of time because I do, you know, so, so it's, yeah, it's, I, I just, I just find them fascinating. I wouldn't necessarily want to touch them. <laughs> I held a tarantula once. Did you? Um, a live one. Yeah. I, I had to do the brave face. It was a kid's, a kid's sort of party. <laughs> they are fascinating. Yeah. They're quite fluffy, aren't they? Um, the, the tarantulas. So how long did it take you to sort of feel established as an artist? Um, well, I had I had quite a different. Well, I don't know if it's different, but I had my own path into it because I um, I had children quite young, 
Um, so I wasn't long out of college when I had my first daughter. And um, <clears throat> so I, I was planning on doing an MA and then um, I didn't. So I sort of, I during um, uh, my two eldest sort of childhood, I sort of worked slowly at home, but didn't really kind of come out into the world until they were a little bit older. And then I just sort of started having shows in funny places and and kind of just built built myself up slowly, I guess. Um, and uh, Nelly, Nelly Duff Gallery sort of took me on and they've been sort of very supportive over the years. And so, yeah, I just kind of I just sort of grew slowly and I've always had I've always had to sort of work around my family. So I haven't had the sort of time that some people have. Yeah, absolutely. I can completely relate to yeah, that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and with, your work is like really distinctive with the, I would, would I be right in saying it's kind of like layers often where you've got, is it, emb- would I, is embossed the right word? Yeah. And then you've got the geometry, which my daughter looked at and she said, oh, it's like a man- mandala. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's a lot of elements of mandala. And then, and then the insect or the animal. So how did you develop that? Was that during uh, university the layering the layering thing um yeah I mean my work is all you're you're absolutely right you know and um in many many which takes many forms but the layering thing is does seem to be really does reoccur over and over again and um I guess again it's like a sort of looking underneath and looking further and deeper and you know and also bringing in different elements that uh, ways of looking you know I've done a lot of work with glass as well and um, layering glass and I think funnily enough I think where it came from if I'm absolutely honest was <clears throat> goes back to my childhood because my parents had this interesting book that I used to kind of look at a lot and um, it was <laughs> it was like it had um, it was done in, in layers so, so you could look at a body um but let you know like you peel back the layers and you go further and further you know inside the body so you start off with a person with clothes on and then take the clothes off and then the skin and then the you know and 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 this idea of kind of these beautiful like thin layers of sort of um acetate um obviously fascinated me because it kind of you know, then it, it it did it did sort of stay with me, and I keep going back to it. And in my my book, um, the uh, the children's book I I wrote a few years ago, um, I did the same thing again. I used acetate layers in the in the book. That's the second book that you yeah created, yes, wasn't yeah. it? Yes, that's right. Yes, it's the boy in the oak. Yeah, that's oh, brilliant. It's a sort of dark fairy tale. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. And beheaded as well, which was that more of a um your work like your artwork yeah that was that was kind of beheaded was was a nice little thing because um this guy um the publisher in Sweden called Cedarteg contacted me and funnily enough I mean that that actually were it, it was one of you know how funny sometimes just one event will then uh, propel you forwards and and it was a small sort of little book really but I did it with him and it and it kind of went well and then it, he sold it in um it was distributed in in New York and it was in um uh, oh I forget the name of this of the store uh, but anyway it, it um it was sold there and uh, Helmut Lang the fashion um brand picked it up and then they got me to do um a collection with them on the spiders <clears throat> excuse me and we went to and we went ended up going to Tokyo and so you know and doing a show there all about the spiders and and linked with 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 the collection and that all came from you know um this guy in Sweden asking me to do the book so yeah it's nice and didn't you take some spiders with you <laughs> i <laughs> no but i wouldn't be allowed but i did actually smuggle one back <laughs> in a, it was a very large spider in a, um, in a, I had to, got a little box and sort of smuggled it back. Um, but I took photographs of spiders because I had to do, I had to do a, it was really quite scary, but I had to do a, um, a live drawing performance in, um, uh, one of the big stores there, Lafayette. And, um, I did a big, a big spider and, uh, was, was kind of watched while I did it, which was the first sort of big live drawing performance I did and yeah <laughs> wow amazing 
in Tokyo. That's yeah, incredible. but they didn't, you know, I did this quite, and it was quite an ugly sort of gruesome spider because it just comes out the way it comes out. But they, um, they, yeah, they, the, the, the Japanese were great and they, they, they liked it. <laughs> I bet they did. So when, when you do a drawing, what, how does it start? Is it organic each time or do you have a sort of a formula? Um, generally speaking, I mean, not all the time, but but generally speaking, I sort of kind of uh, creating a sort of geometric composition and, and the geometry is very important. I mean, in the case of like that spider I did uh, in Japan, there wasn't any um, any geometry, but but a lot a lot of the drawings I do do have that that element in them. And that's very important to me. And then from there, I weave in the natural form. Right. OK. And do you ever create mood boards or anything like that before? So you're sort of working out or does it literally just take shape? I'm yeah, I it's funny with me. I don't um I'm not a big one for sketchbooks and and sort of working things out. I sort of uh I get an idea of what I want to do and then I just do it. Um I mean at college, you know, it's very important to do sketchbooks and sketchbooks are wonderful things, but I I sort of find like once I start, I just want to do it. So so yeah, it's a kind of I don't yeah I don't do much working out I was studying your blue heart beetle um picture and how do you create that the sort of iridescence you know makes it look shiny yeah I kind of um that that, that's using these liquid acrylics and um uh and I just kind of yeah I do like kind of thin washes um but it's it's yeah I kind of got into that for the work for Nellie Duff and it you know it's yeah, I wanted to kind of work with the idea of insects being, you know, that which they are, you know, they have these wonderful colours. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's down to the paint, really. It's lovely. It's so nice and rich. And the Atlas Moth, it's got two colour screen print overlay. and sort of... Oh, yes. Yeah. And how, how does that work? It's got hand finished ink as well, isn't it? Yeah. So that 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 is quite, I mean, when I did those, that, that's quite labour intensive because, um, yeah, we did we did the, the screen print and then... I then sort of set myself a task of hand finishing because I do a lot of hand finishing with my prints. And um, I mean, I, you know, I do think sometimes I do set myself up, you know, uh, quite a lot of work to do. <laughs> but, it, but, I, but it's nice because I kind of, you know, as dot, yeah, using dots and using those inks to try and create a sense of, you know, again, of layering and of the butterfly and the way the butterfly, you know, the moth, sorry, the, the wings are made up. Um, with all my, like these little coloured cells, they're beautiful. I love it. Oh yeah, and the the, uh, the Bee Gees collection as well. The life and hot four. How do you do that? How do you achieve it? Um, but the the ones I did for Nelly Duff, the Bee Gee. Yeah. Um. Well, again, they with the with the Nelly Duff um, uh, prints. Uh, we we get the print done, which I think those were. I think they were were they a lithograph or an inkjet? I'm not sure. Um, and then. Um, so, so we get the print. Well, first of all, I start with the drawing and then we, we, and then we apply that to a print. And then after that, I, yeah, I come back and I just work over the top of it. So, you know, make, uh, hand finishing it with, um, paint or pencil or whatever it is that I'm doing. Um, but it, it kind of is nice because it makes each one special or, or slightly different. And you know, your forget me not um, boxes. Yeah. They, Looking at those, they'd remind me, it took me back to childhood, of being in a museum and looking through glass. Yeah, well, that's just, that's exactly what they're, what they're kind of about, really. I was, um, you know, it's in, in reference to, to those sort of entomology boxes and also the, the, the idea that, you know, um, it, it, we are kind of increasingly going to be looking at nature through glass in a museum, you know, or online, of course. I suppose most people will be just looking at, the images online but you know that as these species die out um that's how we'll, we'll be seeing them and also I kind of wanted to create something that's like a treasure box um you know in a way of um because I do I do work quite a bit with with um actual specimens um they're obviously all responsibly sourced or I find them but you know that, that again it's this idea of creating a, a sort of archival uh, sort of treasure box cool yeah you've you've done um, did a collaboration as well with um 
a honey cup, no, a candle company where you didn't explain. Oh, yeah. yeah. And did you use honey within the frame? Yes, yes, we did. I mean, I've, 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 I've got that piece um, up on my wall. I sort of kept that one. And um, they, they were really wonderful, um, very generous. And I enjoyed working with them a lot. But they, uh, they gave me a whole load of honey, like massive tub of it. And because uh, we needed quite a lot, and uh, I created a um, perspex a box, which we, I mean, I had this um, the the framer that I worked with at the time is a um, guy called Simon Quinn, a, a company's called Frame Junkie, and he was brilliant with he really helped me with the boxes, and he also um, could pin insects and stuff like that beautifully, um, but we 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 had sort of pump the honey in but it was really very tricky because um uh it was a tricky process basically but we, we we did it and then I put a a, a a layer of glass which which I screen which we screen printed the gold geometry and then I hand painted the bees but the honey is wonderful because it it you know it will be forever preserved in there um but it also changes with the with um the heat uh, so so it's like this. It's a living form in a way. Oh, that's amazing. Was it quite sticky at the beginning working with the honey? Yeah, well, we sort of put, we we sort of kind of syringed it in, uh, but it took a few goes trying to work it out. You know how how we were going to do it. I I sort of tried initially um, between glass, but the but the the honey, even though the the glass I thought had been sealed, so I went to a glazier and got it all done. But the honey still somehow managed to push its way through the glass, and it just created such um, a pressure behind the glass that it literally sort of started to push out and seep out. So that, then we went for the the sealed perspex box. It's a real process. Yeah, but it was yeah it was good and 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 building up to that with uh, the honey company um they you know they they were giving me lots of free honey which was brilliant and, uh, and then I did I did the um the design for them for their christmas uh, candle which was nice you take part as well in a well obviously not at the moment because we're all you know locked down at the moment but a car, um art car boot fair is that right yeah that's which is a, which is a art car boot fair. If anyone that doesn't know about it, is the most wonderful thing. Um, it was set up by Karen Ashton um, to sort of. It's, it's, I mean, it's brilliant because it really supports artists. We're all given the opportunity uh, to come set up our store. I mean, with the last one we did, we did online, uh, <clears throat> but normally, yeah, it's outdoors. Um, we hope for a sunny day and we come and we set up our, our stall and, and sell our work and we sell our work directly to, you know, to uh, the customer, to the client. And, and, you know, apart from sort of donating a piece or whatever, you know, it's, 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 it's a great way to earn a bit of cash. And, but, but also what's really lovely is, is you just feel very much part of an event and you get to meet lots of artists and you get to meet the people that, 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 that like your work. So, yeah, it's a lovely thing. Does that take place all over the place? Um, I've done it. Um, I mean, it always happens in London, but she, but we've done it in um, Margate, Hastings. Um, uh, I think the Felix Tower. Although I never went to that one. Um, you know, so they sort of move around. Um, um, I think there's some. There's another one that I've sort of forgotten. But yeah, they they sort of move about. But but the, mainly they're in London. Oh, cool. And I was. Um, looking at your videos, I've I've watched them quite a few times because I'm, I was kind of transfixed by them. Oh yeah, the creation video. Obviously, it reminded me very much of a life cycle. It is, yeah. And then, yeah, and then life after death. Well, I'll let you explain it. But this split screen, but it really is incredible, especially with the music and your drawing. And yeah, how did how did that come about? Yeah. So the um the 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 musical element I'll I'll talk about first so, so yeah so I've been working with um this guy called Nick Powell who is um he's a musician sound designer and does a lot of work uh, for, for theatre um and um it, it's it's been a really nice thing because you know we 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 both bring our own um elements you know yeah, so Nick Powell and I have um we're actually working on a new piece together now as well. Um, but yeah, he brings he brings a musical element to it, the sound. Um, and uh with the life after death one, he came down to Devon and um I 
I, t- I, I recorded the footage in my meadow, um, as and that and that was what I was referring to earlier with um, when I when I happened across this you know this little story being played out between the spider and the grasshopper, um, and he recorded some sounds and that that but the very I mean they, they almost sound like dinosaurs that noise um, was was actually crows slowed down. Um, so he, so he, he, he collected together some sounds and then, um, he then put another track, uh, together as well. So we wanted it to sort of switch between the two. So there was two, two soundtracks going on and then, and then the, and then the different, the different screens, but it's also a way of how do we put together my drawing, which was like a stop motion drawing together with the footage. And I, I mass so much footage. I mean, I've got so much because I'd just go into my meadow and sit there and just wait to see what, what would happen. Um, so, yeah, so it was a kind of a process of sort of putting it all together. And then I've got these great friends who are editors who um, who helped me as well, um, Sam and Gordon Mason. Um, and, yeah, they, they, they that, that, that was kind of how it all came about. And with Creation, which was the first one, um, I'd, I'd actually just met Nick at the time and I really wanted to see how my drawings, how, how I could create a stop motion through my drawings. But I mean, I do it in such a kind of basic way um, because I'm not very technically minded. So I literally, with creation and actually with the other one, I just drew a line, took a photo, drew a line, took a photo. And I had to sort of black out my studio um, and it took quite, you know, it was quite a long process, but but I kind of loved it because I get really absorbed. Yeah, I can imagine. And the the um, life after death, it's obviously it just shows the sort of brutality of of nature. But at the same time, there was something I think because I was watching, you know, you watch your your drawing as well. There's something really sort of calming about it too. Yeah, that that's interesting you say that because that's kind of like how I feel really when I'm in the meadow, you know. Um, you 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 go in there and you sit down and you you sort of sit quite quietly in order to um, catch something happening. So there's this wonderful sense of kind of peace in a way and sort of serenity. But then you you know once you zoom in to that world, you know it is so brutal. Um, and you know you can see these lives play, being played out you know, these insects or animal lives um uh it's yeah it's an interesting um it's an interesting play isn't it i mean and then of course there's very beautiful and subtle moments as well yeah very very beautiful yeah your work has been shown in loads of exhibitions now over the years hasn't it do you still get or do have you ever sort of got nervous before and like first first night nerves Oh, I'd always do. <laughs> I always do. I mean, some, some, some. I mean, a show I had at Lawrence Alk, and they took me to the pub um, for a bit before, which was quite good. And I just had a drink, <laughs> had a gin and swift gin and tonic, but I had to kind of go and meet people. But yeah, I, you know, it's always fine, though, isn't it? It's like it's like your party, you know, when you have a party or whatever it is. Um, the worst bit is just before, and then and then once you 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 start, then you kind of. Um, and you realize and people start coming it's that awful feeling of like what if nobody turns up you know and I, I get that you know that's that's the thing and then by the end of it I'm like oh great you know I've done it yeah it feels kind of elation yeah but I love I love the process of having a show and that's one thing that's been really you know a bit a bit sort of dreary about the last year in terms of my work is I haven't sort of had any shows because of um covid uh, but I love, you know, it's great when you kind of get a, you know, a white space and you can put your work up because it gives you a chance to step back and assess and think about what you've done. And, you know, it's, it's, it's important. It's all, it's very important kind of part of the process of being an artist, apart from selling it, you know. One place I'm really looking forward to visiting again is the V&A. And I think you have some uh... Of work in a sort of permanent collection there don't you yeah I did um I did uh, I was part of an exhibition called the ghosts have gone birds I think that maybe is what you're referring to and um yes which was which was a wonderful um wonderful exhibition um and it was sort of put on by the jealous gallery and uh, a friend of mine Kerry Levy brought me to the table and um 
you know, we all got to choose a bird that was extinct. And I chose the reunion night heron. And I went on this lovely journey with it because um, the only thing that's left of this bird is a tiny bit of bone from the leg, which is in a museum in Paris. Um, so I went to Paris and I was I was I was allowed to go and, and and see this bone. I went into the collections and I just love all that. I love it's like the Natural History Museum. I've been sort of um into their collections as well and looked at bees and stuff and I you know it's just absolutely heaven for me. So so that was really kind of exciting. And then I took that tiny little bit of bone and then made a really big piece of work, which is sort of like five or six foot um a square um rectangular rather and then um yeah and then and then jealous put together a collection of all the prints and that's in the um yeah in the vna that's amazing and you've had various um commissions with soho house haven't you at the, some of the different places yeah they look amazing your work looks really lovely especially against um i was looking at one and it was against this lovely deep wood paneling and it's very sort of biophilic with your work and then the wood and um was that the little boxes? Sorry, was that? Yes, that's right. Yeah. And do you get a free reign with, you know, what you're going to create for them? Well, with those, they they were the um, they were the little boxes that I did. Um, and they actually um, uh, came and bought them and uh, um, at, at a show. Uh, the, otherwise, I've, I was commissioned to do a piece for their um, for Soho uh, House in Mumbai, um, which and I did. Uh, they asked me to do a, a B, so they kind of gave me a loose structure, uh, and then I did um, I did an Indian B, honey B, um, which was very sort of gold, um, which which was which was really nice, and it's a real shame I couldn't go visit. <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're great, so has because they you know you you, you get um, you know you get some free membership. <laughs> <laughs> that can never be a bad thing no it's good <laughs> you've dried flowers too in some of your work don't you they're from your meadow were not they yes um yes yeah, so part of the process with my meadow um going back to the idea of these archive boxes so um every year i i collect flowers from my meadow and press them so um, I do that. And then also I, I've done kind of quite a lot of recording using the cyanotype uh, paper, you know, which is... A, is it a blue? Is it blue cyanotype? Yeah, it's the blue. It's the sun. It, it reacts to the sun. It's a solar paper and it's like an early form of photography. Um, again, you know, very basic thing that you, anyone can do. Um, but it but it is really lovely because you just you know you can take the paper out into the meadow. I have like you know a little blackout box, and I can literally do it there and then with the sunlight and um, yeah, it's just a rather beautiful way of recording um, the flowers. It's really nice to just use these methods, isn't it? Yeah, they're not used as much as they were. Yeah, and I like I kind of like things that are sort of quite old fashioned as well, and I guess you know. Um, you know, I've spent years just drawing on paper and resisting sort of, um, you know, other methods. So, you know, I, I do I do quite like the sort of simple, simple ways of doing things. And did you develop the meadow yourself? Yeah, I did. We've um, I, I was lucky enough to, um, you know, my family have got um, a place in Devon and there's a little bit. It's not very big, uh, but it's a little bit of rough ground. And um, it had been used. It had been used in the uh, in the past for pasture, and um, that my dad and I sort of. Uh, I just I decided I wanted to to do, um, work on on a, on making it into a meadow, and I got involved. I I've, I've been involved over the years with the Bumblebee Conservation Trust, and I've done quite a lot of work with them, and uh, they they very kindly sent down one of their um, officers to come and see the meadow and see if it was a pot you know if it was possible and um uh this lady called Eve uh, O'Rourke came down and she 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 was very excited because there's so many different bees there already um but the the low there's a local bee called the shrill carder bee um uh which is in decline 
And so we sort of built, you know, we not built, sorry, but we sort of decided on the plants that were going to be beneficial to the bees. But also I wanted it to be, um, you know, somewhere that that kind of encouraged all, all kind of um, forms of local wildlife. Uh, and so we sort of began, but it is a real process with with the meadow and it takes at least 10 years really before um, it's established. Does it take a lot of upkeep as well? It does. I mean, well, it initially it does. And we had a real struggle with the grass because the grass is so strong and we didn't want to use any poisons. Um, and we planted um, this plant called the yellow rattle, which is quite good because it comes really early in the season and it fights back the grasses. But that really has been the thing. Also, we, um, my dad and I, we sort of, we fashioned the meadow. So it's made up of six hexagons, uh, large hexagons. I mean, the actual space is about a quarter of an acre. So it's not that big, but I, but I can assure you for me, that's big enough because at the end of this end of the summer, you know, you have to cut it cut it back and then rake it all off and <clears throat> scarify the earth so you know and I'm I'm doing it you know we have some help from um the gardener who comes down with his um you know and helps mow but you know clearing that is quite a job um so um you know it does it does take a bit of effort but 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 it's such a wonderful thing and you know and as I when when we spoke earlier and I talked about broadcasting the seed you know, it's it's just a lovely thing going out there and broadcasting the seed, throwing the seed out across the meadow and then waiting to see what's going to come come up in, you know, late spring, early summer. It's 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 lovely. Yeah. And what, what um, inspired the hexagon shapes? Um, well, I've just been I, I, I've been sort of working with um, the, the hexagon for years. I'm kind of completely obsessed with it. <laughs> you get some amazing photographs. Um sort of an you know if you take it over the top well that's exactly what I'm planning to do and um I did actually at one point I was trying to get some money from the arts council uh, and I wanted to do um some aerial photography um I didn't quite get there but you know I'm going to get maybe this year I'm going to get it together to um you know get a drone down there and take some photographs but that was the plan. I didn't realise there were like about 250 species of bees in, in this country. It's a lot, isn't it? Yes, there, there is. There is, I guess. There is quite a lot when you put together. I mean, people don't really consider all the wild bees. And um, and like one of the things that I get really excited about when I was down in Devon is there's these like tiny, tiny little bees, which, you know, may be the size of, well, um, like a, a fingernail, you know, even smaller. And they um, they look like tiny flies if you didn't look at them carefully. But then, you know, you zone in and you can see them. So, yeah, there's, there's some wonderful species. Do you get rare bees? We do. We do get quite a few. Um, I sort of try and, um, you know, when I'm down there, sort of log, log what I see. Uh, the Bumblebee Conservation Trust sort of, um, they... They do a lot of walks where they they log the bees because obviously a lot of them are in serious decline. But there, you know, it is it is it is pretty. It's a pretty good place to be in terms of nature. Um, there's not too much. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the there's a lot of arable land. I mean, not arable land, sorry, pasture land because you find like areas that are, that have a lot of farming going on. Um, you don't get so many bees, and in fact, quite often you get a lot more bees in the city. That's interesting. Yeah, because because there's more flowers. There's so many, you've got all the gardens, and people um, people don't really realise that. But I remember actually quite a few years ago, I was I did this thing at the Natural History Museum, and I was drawing um, uh, just bees on on cards um, as a way to sort of raise awareness. Um, and uh, I was talking to people, people coming up, and talking to me, and I, I remember sp- speaking to this couple who lived. In sort of out out in the countryside, um, but they live next to a big, you know, farm where they were growing crops. And they said, it, you know, it was just really eerie because there just wasn't that many insects. You know, you didn't get that sound, that buzzing sound, you know, because they're getting um, killed off by the pesticides. Yeah, I know. It's a shame, isn't yeah. it? It'd be amazing for you to make a film, set up a camera at night um, with your meadow and then make a film. Yeah. 
with you know with what's going what goes on in you know at night time well I funnily I funnily you should say that because I've, I have actually well at the moment I'm working on um uh I've, I've sort of turned my attention more to sort of urban the urban sort of wildlife and I've been filming foxes at night uh but I I now have my um my my sort of nighttime sort of cat field camera so um I shall I shall be doing that in Devon hopefully at some point over the summer when I can get down there again yeah you must be missing it at the moment does it does much happen to it in the winter well I think at the moment they've had terrible weather um down there so it's all been a bit muddy and um wet but you know come March, April, it's going to be beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing how every year it just appears, isn't it? It's yeah. Nature is incredible. Well, it is, and that, I think April, May is like my favourite sort of. From June, it's just so beautiful, isn't it? With all the flowers and and all the little animals. <laughs> so obviously, being at home at the moment, um, do you, you? You also you did that brilliant um, the painting at the is it the artist residence in Brighton? Oh yeah. Yeah. walls do you ever do that at home well it's funny I do I I haven't I mean I do I do paint the odd bee here and there sometimes um and I've obviously have done it in my studio but on my walls here I mean they're kind of my walls are kind of crammed with my work really um especially downstairs I kind of um you know because that's one thing being an artist is you end up with quite a lot of work you know you have to sort of do something with <laughs> so I, I I put a lot up on my walls but no I that I mean what what was night nice, was lovely about doing that it was I I've always just mainly drawn on paper or on something like whether it be glass or wax or paper or what have you um so it was lovely when they that's one nice thing actually when you do get commissioned is sometimes when people commission you to do something it actually sends you on you know on a journey with something and um it, i really enjoyed doing the 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 painting on the wall there and um i might possibly be doing a mural this summer actually in london somewhere so um but i'm yet to sort of have that confirmed but it, yeah it sort of breaks you sometimes it breaks you out of your comfort zone which is a good thing well yeah, it looks like a lovely hotel i must give them a follow on instagram oh i love it yeah i'd recommend it i'd recommend going if you if you're ever there speaking of which actually i saw some lovely drawings of your mum and dad on your Instagram page. They're fantastic. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it, they're, they're really clever. For me, when I look at a picture, what brings it to life? It always seems to be like in the eyes. Yeah, yeah, that's nice you should say that. Is that what you kind of concentrate on as an artist when you're drawing faith? Yeah, I guess the eyes are where the life is, isn't it? So I, I, I do, I sort of try and, um, I try and bring the life through in the eyes. Yeah, the feeling. So what are you working on at the moment then? Well, at the moment, I've um, I've been doing quite a lot of small, smaller works. Um, I've been doing in painting more. So I've been um, I've been I'm working on some stuff for um, Natris. Well, it's kind of like a Natris Museum in Paris called De Roll. And I've um, I've been doing more work for Nelly Duff and I've been doing commissions. I've been doing quite a lot of my uh, animal heads because it's all been things that I can do sort of uh around my daughter you know um you know because we've been we've been sort of stuck homeschooling uh but I have some I've got a show coming up hopefully in June so I've got a you know I'm getting I'm getting ready now to start producing big work again and I've just started a, a bigger piece in my studio so I actually I can't wait to sort of do some sort of sizable stuff so I'm kind of like yeah I'm beginning I'm sort of getting ready to get out of lockdown. <laughs> what is the show that's coming up then well hopefully it's um hopefully it's going to happen um it's actually organized by ben Ein and it's a collection of artists um and i think we're all being given a um a room so that will be kind of nice it'll be a nice way to sort of get out there again because you know i'll have my own space so it's not like i'm fighting with anybody um so i can i can create I can create what I want really um and um but be part of a group which will be really nice you know to be part of part of a, a collection of other artists we all can bring people to the table and you know it will be I hope that I really hope that happens I hope we get we get it going you know it's just everything is it's just very difficult for anyone to really commit to anything um until we know we're we're sort of 
out the other side. Yeah. And thank goodness for being online, though, and being, you know, to show your work online. I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm finding um, people are appreciating art even more at the moment because life has slowed down. More time to look at it. Well, the interesting thing is, actually, um, just talking about that is when when the first first lockdown happened and um, I actually was in Devon when um, so I got kind of um, not trapped down there, but I couldn't come back to London for a few weeks. And I was I was sort of working in my bedroom and I, I did this thing called the Artist Support Pledge. Um, I don't know if you're aware of it. Um, and it was set up at that point in time to sort of help artists. So the idea is, is that you can't sell your work for more than two hundred pounds. Um, but then, when you've made a grand, you then you then buy someone else's work for two hundred pounds. Um, and a lot of artists did that, and I did that, and it was great because you know I could. I was such you know. I, it really, it really kind of gave me some some impetus, and because I was, you know, it, it was very affordable work. I did, you know, it was small pieces, so um, it worked really well for that point of time, and um, and I think I think a lot of artists it, it actually really helped them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, would you recommend that everyone give drawing a go? Because I I find it I'm, I wouldn't say I'm brilliant, but I find it very therapeutic. Yeah, well, I I absolutely. I mean, I guess you you know, drawing must be quite important in your work. I should imagine sort of sketching ideas out. I mean, I, I think everyone, yeah, everyone should draw. And I think sadly, you know, people are doing it less and less because they can do everything on the screen. Uh, and it's also, it's very good for, yeah, it's very therapeutic. It's also very good for the brain. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I just love drawing and I love, I love looking at other people's drawings and um, it's, it's something that, you know, as a human being, we should all be doing, I think. Yeah, as my dad has always said, if you've got a talent, it's kind of criminal not to use it. So I agree with that. Yeah, and I think also, yeah, and it's also if it's in there, it's got to come out. Otherwise, I think you'll make yourself ill. That's very true. Well, listen, thank you so much for talking to me today. I really enjoyed it. I found it really interesting. Thank you very much, Lucy. You too. Cheers. Bye. You can check out Jessica's website at jessicaolburn.co.uk and you can also find all the galleries that show her work on there too. Her Instagram is at jessica underscore alburn9 and she updates with loads of beautiful drawings, so well worth checking out. As always, my website with my interior design services is lucylovesyou.com and my Instagram is at Interiors. Do pop over and say hi. I've got another great guest next week, so do subscribe for more chats and in the meantime, have a good one. 